Austin Chumley Russell wasn't originally supposed to be on Pawn Stars, but he quickly became a fan favorite despite appearing to be a liability for the Harrisons at times. While he has helped the show get good ratings, he has unfortunately lost the gold and silver pawn shop quite some money over the years. So let's take a look at 10 times Chumley got cheated badly. In the last season of Pawn Stars, Chumley made a pretty unique deal with a customer who brought in an exact cast of a bronze Madonna bust of Michelangelo's Pieta, one of 500 casts licensed by the Vatican. Owner Richard had found out that these busts were selling for a whopping $80,000 and hearing this asking price, Chumley obviously decided to call in an expert before making an offer himself. Chad Sampson, art director at Icon Fine Arts, valued the bust at around $35,000, saying only the ones that you get directly from the Vatican are worth 80 grand. Based on this opinion, Chum made an offer of 20,000 while Richard tried to get him to go up to 25 grand. The two eventually shocked viewers by agreeing on a trade deal. Instead of taking the $23,000 cash that Chumley had offered, Richard left the bust in the shop in exchange for around 100 pounds of silver, worth nearly $24,000. Silver's went down so much that we made an extra $3,000. How did you know silver was going to go down? He got lucky. Do I look lucky to you? That's skill. This is pure genius. In one episode of the first season, Chumley purchased a piece of fake art for $300, which angered the old man who said that Chumley shouldn't deal in art since he barely knows how to tie his own shoes. You need to read him by his damn hand. I'll teach him the difference between a real etching and a fake etching. He really doesn't know what art is. I don't think he can spell it. <laughs> So Rick decided to give him a lesson in how to distinguish a fake etching from a real one, telling him about how the artist uses a copper plate with a layer of wax that he then scratches through with a metal pen before pouring acid over the whole thing which etches in the copper where there is no wax, hence the name. The artist then takes the wax off and puts ink on the picture that can now be seen on the copper before pressing it into a piece of paper to transfer the picture. This is why Chumley should have been looking for some marks that the copper plate would have left as well as paid attention to the quality of the paper, which should be acid-free and not turn yellow like the one that the fake etching was on. More often than not, Chumley is the one making rather bad deals in the shop, and one of those was made during the last season when he took a pretty unlucky guess on the value of seven boxes of old comic books. The seller had inherited the collection from her recently deceased grandfather and had originally asked for $2,000 before striking a deal with Chumley set at $500. After an expert checked the comics out, he came to the conclusion that they would sell for about $200 if the Pawn Stars were lucky. Naturally, Rick was pretty angry about the whole thing. If you spent 500 bucks on some comic books, I'll be lucky to get like 180 bucks out of and seven boxes of the recyclable paper. We'll jump right in with a man named West who came to the Harrison's pawn shop in season 5, saying he had a phenomenal opportunity for Chumley, which then turned out to be a can of Zudu. In other words, a can with elephant dung. He had told the cameras that he wanted to start the haggling at an unbelievable $10,000, but would be willing to accept 5 bucks. The old man obviously didn't take this offer seriously and told Chumley that whatever he would pay for the item would come out of his paycheck. Chum still decided to offer $20 and since West had originally paid just $7.50 for the manure himself, he was more than happy to accept his offer, making this not just a bizarre purchase, but also a pretty weird deal in general. In season 15, a man called Kevin came to the gold and silver pawn shop, offering Chumley a 1957 custom Gibson Les Paul guitar made for the 2006 US Open. The guitar featured several famous tennis players such as Andre Agassi for example, and although Kevin was a huge guitar fan, he wasn't really into the tennis stuff and was ready to part with the instrument he had received as a gift. Chum pointed out that Gibson guitars were quite collectible, with Les Paul being the best model, while the US Open is one of the biggest events in tennis. He wasn't willing to meet Kevin's asking price of $5,000 though, but the two eventually agreed on $3,500, which according to Kevin is what the guitar goes for. Anyone who has ever watched the show knows that the guys always need to make some kind of profit and will normally not go as high as the current market price, so it didn't come as a surprise when Rick was less than thrilled about Chum's purchase. He was already shocked that Chumley had bought the ugly guitar in the first place and got even more irritated when he heard the price he had paid. 
paid. But unfortunately, things got even worse. Guitar expert Jesse valued the unique guitar at around three grand, a whole 500 bucks less than Chumley had paid for it. So the Pawn Stars definitely lost money in this deal. While Chumley is one of Rick's best employees today, things weren't always like that. In fact, Chum made some pretty big mistakes in his early days on Pawn Stars, like the time he was minding the shop by himself and was supposedly offered a Gibson mandolin. Thank you. Unfortunately, it was one of the thousands of fakes that can be found around the US and was an A model with the Gibson on the headstock in the old script. It did have the decals on the edges and through one of the F holes you could even see the stamp of the modern script Gibson logo, but besides that it seemed different. Chumley still bought the mandolin for $1500 despite the fact that his purchase limit is only $1000, which is not unfounded. A friend and music shop owner later estimated the mandolin's worth to be just a hundred dollars. Being pranked by your best friend is pretty annoying, but even Chum's boss Rick has double-crossed his favorite employee in the past. In season 3, Chumley decided it was time to get some business cards to build his clientele. But as Rick didn't really want him to be representing the gold and silver pawn shop with his business cards, he told Corey to order some cards without Chumley's full name. A few days later, they surprised Chumley with the cards, but to his disappointment, Corey had misspelled his name, making Chum his first name and Lee his last name, before making the guys laugh by revealing that he actually wanted the cards to pick up girls. Yet, he decided to accept being Mr. Lee from now on and started handing out the cards to customers entering the shop. Chumley has been tricked by customers on more than one occasion, but even his co-worker and best friend Corey likes to scam him every once in a while. After Chum saw that there was a lot of money in the jackpot in the episode One Way Ticket of season 8, he thought about getting a lottery ticket. A little later, Corey presented him with a scratch card, which Chumley eagerly scratched, winning $10,000 and immediately leaving the gold and silver pawn shop to go on vacation. However, Corey then revealed to Rick and the old man that the ticket was fake and from a party store and he then spent the rest of the day trying to reach his buddy to stop him from spending his alleged winnings. At some point Chumley texted him that he had just purchased a ticket to the Cayman Islands to avoid paying taxes on the money and at that point Big Haas started to feel really guilty about his prank and came clean. Although Chum sounded pretty shocked on the phone, he later came to the shop and revealed that he hadn't fallen for Corey's lie at all but simply used the opportunity to take a day off. So Chumley may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but he still isn't fooled that easily. Just like when seeing the Buick Regal, Chumley also got pretty excited when he and Corey were meeting with a potential customer in a 2012 episode of the show. But thanks to Corey, Chumley didn't make the mistake of purchasing a 31 ton Robosaurus even though he really wanted to. The machine that was built in the 80s is a transforming Tyrannosaurus Rex that can breathe fire and eats cars, trucks, and even small planes. The seller tried to convince Chumley and Big Hoss of his money making machine by claiming that they could earn up to $25,000 a day by renting it out. However, the seller was asking for an insane price of a million dollars and Corey ignored the overly excited Chumley, calling Robosaurus the biggest, most impractical thing he had ever come across. And not buying the Robosaurus was definitely the right decision as the last time the machine changed hands was at a classic car auction in Arizona in 2008 for the low price of $575,000. Seems like the owner wanted to make a few extra bucks in addition to all the cash that his money making machine must have earned him already but this time the pawn stars weren't tricked so easily and avoided breaking their bank account. One of the first lessons watching Pawn Stars has taught us about negotiating a deal is to never let your feelings take over if you don't want to be ripped off. But that is exactly what Chumley did in season 4 when he and Corey met a guy to look at a 1986 Buick Regal. Chumley immediately fell in love with the car, prompting Corey to remind him that you're supposed to pretend like you don't like it when you're buying it. Big Hoss was not impressed by all the stuff the owner had done to the Buick and wasn't willing to pay more than $1500, one grand less than 
than the seller Nader was looking to get. While Corey was ready to walk away, Chumley and Nader agreed on a deal at $2,000 and the Pawn Stars fan favorite then took the Buick to Danny, the Count Coker, to get some custom work done. The other three Pawn Stars weren't very impressed when Chumley and Danny presented the car when it was done as there were no visible changes. Until Chumley got into the car and demonstrated the newly installed hydraulic system that allows the driver to bounce around in the car. While Corey and Rick couldn't stop laughing, the old man simply stated that it was the most stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Still, he got into the car to have Chumley give him a ride home and couldn't do anything about being bounced around himself. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.